Hi everyone and welcome back. What we're doing this week, we're continuing on with our descent build, so it's time to make some steps. So before we get to the table, what I've done is I've cut one, two, three pieces of foam, so they're two inches width. First one's three inches, next one's two by two, and then a one by two. And I've done two piles. I cut them before texturing them, so if you get any issues when texturing them, you make a mistake. You make a mistake cutting them. So you used to make a mistake cutting them and then just recut another piece and it's do all the work texture in it and then kind of put it again and go something wrong here. So let's get to the table and crack on. Right, so we have three different stamps, dungeon floor, a broken floor, and a smashed floor. So we only need to do the first half of the tile, so we'll do that. So it's gonna be a bit random. Put it out. So we've got a lip there. I'm going to cut this lip anyway. This next one. Let's try and get it a bit closer this time. There we go. So make sure it looks right when the next one goes on. Yep. That's that one. So I'll take another one. Let's have that one. Line it up. Like that. Let's turn it around. Let's have that design this time. Let's make sure it's slid. Just there we go. trim these up and make them look a bit tidier. Right, so we've got our three tiles. We'll knock this one up a little bit, so we're just going to take a bit off of that, doesn't really matter. Just bring that down a little bit. And we'll just take some off this side here a little bit as well. Just nice and a bit blunt. You can tell they're actually designed. Up a little bit. So that gives us a nice rough set of steps, so I crack on with the other one. Alright, once we've got them all cut, get this knife out of the way, I'm just going to grab some PVA and stick it all together. So a good coat of PVA. So this would need to dry overnight. Probably be in it. could dry in an hour, but I like to leave it to dry. Hence, a lot of things like this, I do bits before I go to work. And then leave it to dry and come back to it the next day. So just wipe this on. So it's just neat PVA. So that should Take that, like that. Just grab a piece of foam. Push that at the back. Just to make sure it all squares up. Give it a hold a minute. And put it out the way to dry. Right, our PVA is dried up, so everything's nice and firm together. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the block wall roller. I shouldn't have marked these down. I thought about it afterwards, but never mind. And I just want to push in a pattern into the side like that. Have to be careful here because if you do it like that, you'll snap the bottom step. So I just work in a pattern, turn it around. So, so we have a block design. Right, the other thing you want to do is just grab a piece of sandpaper and just smooth off some of these edges a little bit. Just get the natural wear. You might have to pick with your finger. So that day, so it's just smoothed up a little bit. So we're going to grab some Mod Podge and Black, and we'll give it a coat. So we just grab our Mod Podge and Black, and as always. Work it in. This brush is a bit stiff, so, but to be honest, you want to sort of stab it into the bottom edge of the steps. Anyway, it's a little hole there. It's still showing as blue. There we Have I got it yet? Oh, he's got one bit that's a bit fiddly to get the paint in. and we'll leave it to dry. Right, once uh, more Podge and Black is dry, we've got a nice firm base. So we're gonna mix up some colors. So I'm gonna get some medium gray. Put that on the palette. Might need a bit more than that. There we go. Get some red. And put red one side. Don't need a lot. Yellow the other side. Oh, that needs a shake. Like that. And we're just going to get some iso water and glycerol mix. So it's just like a thinner. Drop that on there. So just got a brush. Thin this grey down first. Yeah, I'm on brush. Because it being a acrylic craft paint, it's quite thick. So I'll just get this to come thin down. Some yellow at the edge here. So pull that into it. And then we pull this this way and pull some red into it this way. So I'm not going to worry about cleaning the brush out. So I just work this on. Just a coat over the top. Sort of over brushing, but. Red, just there's some colour in it. 
you know. Right, as these are pretty well dry, I'm just going to grab some cream, that we usually do. Back in the brush, out the brush, just check it. I tend to use the back of my hand, that's great, stacking into the brush there. Get some more cream in it. And then just flick across the surfaces. I do this again. After it's been washed, so it's just a matter of getting some variants into it. So just flick it. See it. So we let that dry and we'll get a wash on it. So once that's dry, we're just going to grab some Agrax. Use that nice big brush. Just whack it on and work it about. So it's just come down. You can knock up your own cheap washes, don't have to use Agrax. Save it for your figures. Just whack it on. And leave it to dry. Alright, now these are dry, we're just going to get a cream dry brush. So just wet the paint into the bristles. And come at it in multiple directions. Like so and so. So it's just coming down. Try and catch the front of the steps. A little bit. And try and catch these edges. So this is quite subtle. If it hits too hard, just get your finger up and give it a rub. You could give this a layer of mold podge over the top just to seal it to protect it, but it's fairly solid to be honest. We've got two of these, you can have your steps coming down into the dungeon or going up out. You can have one over here and then a complete gap and have that one leading into your dungeon. So you say, right, you go out there, you come down there. Or using last week's little piece, which was the wooden bridge, where we cut these couple of little recesses on the planks underneath and put it together. And you've got a little walkway to go over the top of a stream or a ravine. So hopefully you found this helpful. So stick the camera up and have a chat. Right, there you have it. I'll put a pick at the end of the video as always. If you found this useful, please give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. Um, biggest things to take away from this really is adding the reds and the yellows into your grey because it makes a very big difference to the colouring instead of that harsh grey it just tones it down a little bit gives it that subtle sort of change isn't it when you look at it it works really well some people say why do you do the first dry brush if you're going to whack a load of wash over it well it still shows through it just gives that subtle change and then the second dry brush is more to catch the edges to really lift it so hopefully you liked it I think they look great looking forward to using them so I'll be cracking on with next week's video, which 
I'm not sure what I'm doing yet because I've got so much to do, but I'm sure I'll pick something. Also, another note, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, please visit the Facebook page. There'll be a link in the description. There's also a group page, which I haven't pushed, but I want to start get moving, which is Tabletop Fanatics, which I'll stick down as well in the description below, which I wanted a sort of open group where people can share everything. People can share Kickstarters that they're working on. People making stuff can put stuff in because a lot of groups I found are quite closed and said, no, you can't promote yourself. Well, how are you meant to promote yourself? So let's do that. I'm not saying go spam it. Please don't. So be considerate, be nice to each other, but please use it as a benefit and a tool to the community. And I'll see you all soon. Take care. Have a great week gaming. Cheers.